This is Princess, and Princess uh, is a very nervous dog. She has a case of separation anxiety, and she was uh, basically Grandma's dog. Grandma, unfortunately, has passed on, and so now Princess is living here, and just doesn't really have any practice being alone. So uh, when a dog has separation anxiety, it's essentially a panic attack, and so I've seen a lot of people get very angry with their dog when it has an accident or chews things up. You would never get upset with one of your friends got so scared they peed their pants, and that's essentially the same thing that's going on. So dogs, uh, most of the time I find with dogs with separation anxiety, they are lavish with attention on demand and so much that the dog just doesn't have any practice being alone. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to teach your dog how to stay. Now, this is not just to teach the dog to stay. It will help with her confidence, but also it gives us the ability to help the dog practice being alone while we're still here. So instead of you being alone when I leave the house, I'm going to ask you to sit and stay while I go get a cup of coffee. I'm going to come back and release you. I'm gonna ask you to come and sit and stay, and then I'm gonna go up and change clothes and come back and release you. And the idea is to progressively ask your dog to practice for longer and longer periods of time. Now, when most people teach their dog to stay, they, they combine all three elements together. Uh, you really should separate the stay down into three elements. Uh, for D, or I call it the three Ds, duration, distance, then distraction. Most people would say stay and take a step away, and then say come, and you're teaching your dog an auto release. In this case, we're going to say stay, and I'm going to use the word break. The guardians may want to change the word to something else later on, but you need a distinctive word that means that we are done with the stay. Now, I have a stay and a wait, and so my wait means wait until the next command. Stay means stay until you hear one specific release command and only one specific release command. Now, not doing anything and just looking at you is kind of hard for dogs to do. So the first step is just for duration. We want the dog to be right in front of us, and we're just going to slowly elongate the period of time the dog is asked to wait. Princess, get your own over there. All right. Now, I normally put a dog in a sit, but she doesn't know how to sit on command yet. You see that lean tells me that she's a little insecure. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, let her see that I have a treat. Princess, let's do it this way. Stay. Stay. Now, she wasn't fully paying attention, and the dog doesn't have to look at you when you're doing this at first. Princess, stay. Stay. Stay, princess. Stay. So you saw she started moving away. Um, in retrospect, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through how to teach your dog to stay. She really has almost no commands, and her self-esteem is so low that the guardian's going to really need to work on practicing, building up her self-esteem through passive training and some of the other techniques that we've gone over off-camera. Uh, but I'm going to go through all the steps and, and so you know how to do it. So what I do is I usually put the dog in a sit right here, and while the dog's looking at me, I say stay. I extend my arm like a stop sign. So when the dog's looking at me, I say stay when I each, uh, reach the end of my arm or where, wherever I extend my reach to. Then I collapse my hand to my chest. So it's stay count to three, and then give the dog a treat and say the word stay as the treat goes in the dog's mouth. The next time I say stay, and I might go to like six seconds. So pick whatever interval you want, but go at the dog's pace. If you go from five to 10 and at nine, the dog gets up and moves away, then you push too far. Back up and practice it, maybe five, then seven, then nine, whatever it is. Uh, but the idea is to keep practicing this way until you get up to five minutes. Now, that's gonna take a couple of weeks to get to that point, where at first, Oh, it depends on how often you practice and how smart the dog is. She might, she seems to be pretty smart, so it might be a little bit faster than that. There you go. We'll let you get an easy Madrid. Keep you on camera while we're doing this. So I say stay, and then I clasp my hand back, count to whatever duration is, and then give the dog a treat. And a lot of times I keep my treat hand behind my back so the dog's not trying to go towards it. So you're gradually going to progressively elongate it. Now, for training, you usually want to train your dog uh, in less than, three, uh, less than two or three minute training sessions. But for the stay, we're going to go up to five minutes. So we want to get up to progressively to the point where we can say stay and for, have the dog sit there for five minutes without saying stay, stay, stay. Stay once and then at the end. Uh, and then after we reach the uh, achieved amount of time, then we do, deliver the treat and say stay a second time. Now, let's say she was staying here and I got to the point where I'm at five minutes or whatever the, the breaking point for today's practice session is. So let's say she, let's, let's simulate that she's going to stay right here, stay. And then what I'm going to do is throw the treat to say and say break or whatever your command word is. So at the very end of practicing this, you throw a treat to the side, when the dog gets it and licks it in their mouth, then we're gonna say that one specific release word, and this eventually becomes the dog's release command word. 
So keep on doing stay in short fractions uh, or short practice sessions and make sure you do it throughout your house. Don't always just do it right here. Otherwise the dog will be able to stay right here but won't be able to stay right over there. So do it in the kitchen, the bathroom, well not the bathroom, well you can do it anywhere. Um, uh, until you get to the dog to stay for five minutes. And for a lot of dogs, stay is hard just for duration. They're like, why are you not giving me the treat? And they start offering other behaviors. My dog, I had to do two weeks of one second stays. Just one second, one second, one second, and then break. And eventually we got our way up there. So don't be frustrated if you have to go slow like that. Next, day, uh, next step is for uh, distance. So if I, uh, I'll actually stand because my feet are about to go to sleep. Uh, well, I'm, not, I'm not gonna stand, I'm just gonna change my position. So if, I was, uh, if the dog was at this point, once I know to five minutes stay, it's gonna be easier. So I say stay, and I collapse my hand back to my chest, and I would take one step back, and I, my starting point is whatever number of steps I take back, I count twice that number. So I take one step back, I would count at two, then come back to the dog, give the dog the treat and say stay, and then uh, 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 next time I would take two steps back and wait to four, then take two steps forward and give the dog a treat again and say stay, even though she's not staying. Um, and eventually we can get further and further away. Once you get to the point where you can be about 20 feet away from your dog while you're in the dog's line of sight, the next step is we want to incorporate distance. Uh, or excuse me, uh, uh, go without a line of sight. So if you can follow me with the camera, let's say if there's a wall, I just say you see it right there, but let's say there's a wall right here and the dog is staying there. So I'm backing up, uh, or the dog's here. So I step at this point. Now if I go over here, the dog is now blocked by the wall. Now, as soon as that happens, the dog's usually going to come and try to find you. This is why we practice for five minutes of the stay first for duration. So as soon as I do this, I get to this point, I step to the side, I count to one, and then I go back to the dog right away and give it to the, the stay command. The next time I back up and I might stay out of sight for two seconds, then three, then I might go, you know, five, whatever, jump whatever interval you need to. Uh, I don't want to spook you, sweetheart. I just want to sit down. It's a little bit easier for, cam for the camera angle. So... The idea for this is we're helping the dog practice being in the room without seeing us for progressively longer and longer periods of time. Eventually we can get up to the point where we can have her stay for out of, our, uh, out of sight for five minutes. When we get to that point, then we wanna start incorporating distractions. So then we might incorporate like a dog barking on TV or uh, we're, out, we're in a play, uh, the, without saying where the homeowners are, there's a, a sound that goes on frequently outside of the house that the guardians are not a big fan of, but that's a distraction. So we want to practice amongst distractions. So the dog is practiced in the real world situation. If there's a sound of you know a neighbor uh, slamming the door or hammering or whatever it is, we want the dog to practice amongst those things. Madrid. Um, and the idea for this is once the dog has to stay for all three of these durations, then as I talked about in the beginning of the video, we put the dog in a stay and we get up and go get a drink of water, come back and give it a release. And then we make that progressively longer and longer. Now when it comes to dog behavior, dogs, once they can achieve two hours of something, you do not have to practice beyond it. They've got it. Now, some dogs you actually have to go up to the two, two hours. I don't think it's gonna be the two hours for her, um, but just keep on practicing it until you get to the point where she can be a, uh, alone in the house for a, a, like 15 minutes or longer with you in the house, but somewhere else. The next step is to practice leaving, well, now I'm gonna go through some, ste uh, some steps for uh, separation anxiety. Dogs recognize the, the, the things that we're doing that lead up to us leaving. We call these triggers. So picking up our keys is a very common trigger. Picking up your sunglasses, putting on your shoes in a specific place, um, turning off the TV, putting the radio on, you know, turning the lights on and off. And we have a whole ritual. So one of the things you might wanna do is have one of your guardians or one of the humans film the other human as they're getting ready to leave for the day. And so you just notice all these little things. Then the idea is we wanna help the dog practice all those individual steps one at a time independent of us leaving. So I might go over and pick up the keys and put them down and then sit down. And I was like, every time he picks up the keys, he leaves. But now he picks up the keys and he sits, sometimes he sits down. So now we're breaking the association. Um, and eventually you do that with each individual step, sitting and put my shoes on here, and then I take the shoes off and sit back down. And eventually we can put two of those together. So I pick up my keys, put them in my cock pocket, sit down, put my shoes on, and then I sit back down on the couch and watch TV. So we're gonna gradually associate all these things together, but not with us leaving. Now, uh, a couple other little tips. Uh, the guardians, like a lot of us do, when we leave, we're like, oh, are you gonna be okay? I'm sorry, sweet princess, you hang in there and I'll be home as soon as I can. Dogs sleep 17 hours a day. We should be like, princess, you little princess, how come you get to sit home? I gotta go work and bring home the bacon. So don't make a production about it when you come and go. When you leave, just leave. Don't, say, don't even say goodbye, just leave. Um, that also becomes a trigger. 
Uh, the other thing is when you come home, if your dog's all excited and you pet the dog when it's excited, you're, in, you're enhancing an unbalanced state of mind, an unbalanced, unbalanced state of mind number one, but also you're making a big deal about when you return, which makes it something to look forward to. And again, that out of balance. So when you come home and your dog's excited, just ignore it. As soon as the dog is nice and calm, start reaching for it. And just acknowledging and reaching for it, the dog start wiggling, pull your arm back and go about your business. So eventually you'll get to the point where you'll be able to go all the way and touch your dog and it stays calm and quiet because it understands that's the only way I'm gonna get attention from my humans. Now, uh, lastly for her, like I mentioned earlier, she has really only two commands, I think, go to the dog bed and get the ball. And uh, so the more commands and skills that she has, the more confident she's gonna be. And then the more confident a dog is, typically the less reactive they are. I snuck that one in there, you didn't see it. Uh, and so building up a dog's confidence, I talked to the guardians about uh, taking turns each week, one of the guardians teaching her a new trick or command and then practicing it all week long. And then the next week, the next guard, the other guardian does it. And so back and forth, if we do this, uh, Madrid, uh, then eventually we're gonna build up the dog's self-esteem. So we wanna tackle this problem on multiple angles. Now she also is not a big exercise, uh, big dog for exercise in terms of going outside. She was really an indoor dog primarily. And so uh, we went over some potty training tips. There should be a video linked up above this on the text about potty training. If there's not, hopefully the guardians will let me know. Uh, but uh, exercising her before we leave can also be really helpful. I call this putting a dog in position to succeed. So we pulled out, I pulled out a laser. She seemed to like to chase the laser. So maybe before we leave, we play a little laser game and then we leave. Uh, and so we deplete uh, that excess energy. All these individual elements were practicing independent of each other, and eventually the, the culmination of all these things helps eliminate the dog's fear and frustration. We build up the dog's confidence. Um, we help it practice being alone, and all these things together can help a dog learn that, hey, it's not the end of the world when humans leave. I'm just gonna sleep, catch myself some Zs. When they come back home, then we play laser game or whatever else it is. So this is how you can teach your dog to stay, as well as some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that suffers from separation anxiety.